prepare to do battle in the Sun Dome in Tampa, Florida. And what a fine basketball facility this is, as now it's time for tonight's Amanda game plan. Well, the Hawkeyes tonight get Kevin Smith back. Can he add quickness? There's no doubt about that. But will it be effective quickness? Will he be able to generate defensive quickness, offensively getting the ball off the court? Iowa has to act and not react. They found themselves reacting to other teams rather than doing what they do best. Now, if there's pressure by Butler, and they love pressure defense, can they go the back door? Can they get some cuts to the basket to get easy layups? Looking at Butler, they have to overcome that injury to Geis. He was really an offensive force for him, and Brins must show up. JP has been the center, and in some games he's been there, other times EWOL. He showed up last time, 14 points and 10 rebounds Monday against Ball State. And we don't know yet until the players come out on the floor if he'll get the start tonight, and he will be in the starting lineup. And speaking of the starting lineup, let's take a look at those starting lineups right now, which are brought to you by Counter Lock and Load Closed Handling System. Iowa with the change for the first time this year. Mack explained it before the game with Kevin Smith back at the point. And Val Bars will come off the bench at the two guards. So Troy Skinner, who started 29 times last year, will get the start in this game. And Prenz is starting rather than Galt. There was some concern maybe Galt would start because of his good outing last time. And the Hawkeyes with the opening tap. Iowa in their home uniforms on this neutral site. The 10,000 seat Sundome. Here's Street going right to the basket against Taylor. Big mismatch against Taylor. Taylor just 6'4 and Street 6'9. Right away you see Butler going man to man, but not as much pressure as they normally do. With Geis out, it really hurts their rotation. Therefore, they are not as deep on the bench. And without heavy or hard pressure, they'll try and sag off and save their legs. Renz over Earl trying to tie the score, and Rodell Davis pulls down the rebound for the Hawkeyes, who are averaging 10 more rebounds than opponents so far. Moses. Renz, good position, and he has been aggressive on the first two clips down the floor. AC lucky he didn't get a foul. First turnover against Butler. It's Iowa basketball. Here are the men working the ball game tonight. From the Metro Conference, which is the home of South Florida, their new home, Tom O'Neill, Dan Chrisman, and Carol Allen. And, of course, Chrisman and O'Neill also work Big Ten games. Butler stays in the man. The pass attempted for Street, and then Earl gets it back. So AC got away with the mistake and made it count. Now, Earl tried to force that pass in there. It was the, the mismatch we talked about. Taylor on Street. This is Bowen, the point guard, only 5'8", a good assist man, averages four and a half assists a game. Now Archbold, the leading scorer on the season, one of the best in career history for Butler, connects on the three. Fans will really like watching Archbold. Very good, very knowledgeable player about the game, especially offensively. Good decision by A.C. Davis with the hoop. pace which both teams favor so far and Iowa with the lead six to three almost two minutes have been played this is Wilson off the pick by Brenz the pick and roll Street got in the way Butler still has it Wilson drives and is fouled by James Moses well, the Hawkeyes have done a good job AC Earl recognizing here the easy give up three on one Double pump by Rodell and in. That's almost a guard-like move by somebody 6'10". Darren Archbold inbound. He and AC Earl played together on an NIT All-Star team overseas this summer. Street with the rebound. That's a good, aggressive defensive rebound by Chris. Now he tries to finish it off, and with the rebound is Brent. Butler down six to three. Two and a half minutes have been played. The three, nothing but cord for Michael Wilson. He averages almost 10 points a game, and that's one of the things that's good about Butler. Very balanced scoring. And right now you've seen two threes by Butler while Iowa has had three twos. And you will see Butler like to put it up from the perimeter. And that is one of the main things they missed with Geis. The substitutes come in for the Hawkeyes. Here's Wade looking Bill into the lineup. Wade 6'5 at a four dodge, averaging 6.6. .6. And here comes a very excited Kevin Smith. Yeah, this is the go-go guy, the G-man. He gets them going. 
offensively, defensively. And Val Barnes has also come in at the timeout. So it's Smith and Barnes along the back line. Winters is in, replacing A.C. Earl and looking Bill and Street up front. Street, the only starter in the lineup. Seventeen oh seven to go. First half. Game time at six. Smith first shot since coming back. What a way to begin. One for one. And I'll tell you, you will watch him. He has got just great quickness. I'm not so sure he is not the quickest person in the Big Ten. I call him my Morris Code player. Dots, like that. dots and dashes. He just <laughs> dots here, dashes there. Street with a foul. This is first, I was second. Butler doing a good job trying to get the ball inside. Here's a leaner off the glass and a foul. At the free throw line, John Taylor. Now we saw Kevin Smith hit his first shot. He was so excited about his debut that last night he got assistant coach Bruce Pearl and A.C. Earl to go over at 11 o'clock to a recreation center that the Hawkeyes have access to and shoot for an hour at 11 o'clock at night. That's how excited he was about this debut. I'll tell you, it's a routine they've gone through for a while. And both players enjoy the late night shooting, get them relaxed before they go to bed. Taylor's free throws tied to score. Barnes tries to untie and does. And now Val Barnes shooting that ball more relaxed at that off guard position. Kevin Smith getting him wide open. Val's got to be pleased about being switched back to number two. Certainly performed well there last year. Enough to earn honorable mention, all Big Ten honors. Winters called with a foul as Bren's trying to go inside, and Iowa red hot shooting to start the ball game. Five out of seven. Well, Winters, when he comes in, is about four inches shorter than AC Earl, but he's really a strong physical player. That time, really working hard to keep Bren's from the ball. Gets called for the foul. And now Winters out, and AC Earl is back into the lineup. He's see averaging 21 points a game to lead the Big Ten. Archbold to Bren. J.P. Brenz averaging 13 a game, as Max Starr had mentioned. Hadn't started the last two because he wasn't aggressive enough. He's come out aggressive tonight, and he ties the score at 10. A.C. tries to back Brenz down, and a travel is called on A.C. in so doing. A.C. lost his balance while trying to post up strong on the inside. As he leaned backwards, they called him for shuffling the feet. Game tied three times. Butler has not yet had the lead, but a chance to take it right now with the game even at 10. Archbold muscling his way in and Street with another rebound. Taylor packs him on the arm. For John Taylor, his first foul, and for Butler, their second, while the Hawkeyes have been assessed with three. And an official timeout is called. 15:47 left to play in the ball game's first half. Game all even at 10. We'll be back in the Sun Dome in Tampa right after these messages. Four in the game tied at 10. And yes, there are plenty of black and gold fans in the stands tonight as Hawkeyes are on the West Coast watching from San Diego, and they're here in person on the East Coast in Tampa. Lots of Iowans here. Well, when you look at the Iowa game, you expect them to go inside street. And Earl, our number one and three in rebounding in the Big Ten. Right there, inside, Earl the opportunity. Speed sitting down right now. But those two are the new twin towers in the Big Ten. And for Butler, it's John Taylor with his second foul. And the team fouls are now even at three. So A.C. Earl, who has done so many things well, but has struggled at the line, goes to the line, and he is a 53% shooter. Into the lineup for Butler, Wade Galt. He had started the last two games at center. Now with Taylor picking up the two fouls, Galt will replace him. It is a short Butler team that you are seeing out here, but they really play hard. Coach Collier, when he got to Butler, said that's what he wanted his teams to be, just exemplify being a hard-nosed team, being very aggressive. Brenz pulls down the rebound. Butler a chance to regain the lead. 
So far, the Hawks have really kept Archbold out of the offense for the most part. He did take a three and hit that, but he is averaging 23.6 and really is a factor. In fact, really a star for Butler. Last year, the most valuable player in their conference. Iowa goes to the zone, which they will try to identify Archbold where he is as he cuts through. And the offensive foul called on Galt, and that will be his first and Butler's fourth. I'm sure Coach Collier there saying, I don't understand that one. Coach Collier from this area grew up in Miami and in the lineup for Butler comes Danny Allen, a sophomore from Appleton, Wisconsin at 6'8", averages three per game. So far, Iowa's shooting well, but so is Butler. And Butler, the reason they're in the ball game, and even with Iowa, they've hit threes to Iowa's twos. Bowen. And Troy Skinner goes down, nothing called there. Moses loses the ball, but does a good job of recovering it, and Rodell Davis hits the shot. Rodell is still doing what he does best, is understand his role, what shot he can take, what shot he can't take. Almost 60% of the year field goal percentage for Rodell Davis. Archbold tried to dish it off, and then Bowen maybe an ill-advised return feed to Archbold. And the basketball belongs to Butler, as James Moses onto the press table, trying to save it for Iowa. Danny Allen to inbound for the Butler Bulldogs. Rick Tubbs has come in for Iowa, and he was harassing on the inbounds play. This is Archbold. Moses with the rebound. Iowa with a three-point lead. A little over 14 left to play in the first half. The game starting about a half an hour late because of the length of the first game. Won by South Florida, 96-77 over Northeastern Illinois. Iowa really having a tough time getting the ball inside. They're not cutting very hard off the screens. As a result, the shot clock down to 10. The clear out for Skinner. And the Hawkeye turnover as Brenz picks it up. Here's Bowen. The point guard hits for the Bulldogs and pulls Butler back to within one at 13 to 12. Earl. Five early for AC. Earl really showing his versatility, handling the ball, challenging, and passing it off when not having that six foot jump shot. Archbold for three. Make it a two. He was inside the three point line. And the Hawks guilty of fouling, where they're being fouled, is Butler committing the personal foul. You get another look. Moses, little scoop pass. Earl just owning the middle of the court, coming down, getting pushed from behind. He goes on Allen. His first, Butler's fifth. They see a moment ago, one out of two at the stripe. He's Iowa's leading scorer so far with five, and as Mac mentioned, He's the Big Ten in scoring as Tom Davis talks to his team. Bruce Pearl off to his right. Okay. AC coming off a career high 32 points against Iowa State. Point guard change for the Bulldogs. Michael Wilson comes in. He's a very quick player, and he will place another quick one in Tim Bowen. But that position is very critical against Iowa's pressure. Howard Bowen handles the ball. And now Wilson will bring it up against Iowa pressure as Chris Street resets the pressure of Mick Court, looking for the trap. Guitar Relaford has the ball now. He's just come in for Butler. Here's Archbold has already hit two from three-point range, and the tipping is there by Danny Allen. Nobody He's tied up for the fourth. Uh, nobody blocking out for Iowa. Just letting anybody come right in. Davis is hammered as he tries to go up. With a personal foul, Rutherford. Strong move, Rodell Davis behind the basket. Has to be strong to even have a chance for that ball to go in. Forces his way between three Butler players. And the Hawkeyes. 
as they're struggling at the free throw line. Iowa so far, two out of five. Rick Moss and Mitch Walker looking at the action. Free throw shooting has been a problem for the Hawks this year, and so far have been the story tonight. It's amazing when you look at Butler, you're looking at a team that two times out of the last three years have been national champions as a team in free throw percentage. Like Archbold was the top individual free throw shooter in the country last year. Here's Wilson. And he hits nothing but cords from three-point range. And the perimeter shooting has been very impressive for Butler as they take the lead. Davis ties it up. Oh, excellent pass by Kevin Smith. Rodell Davis just going right to the block, waiting to receive the pass. Five ties so far, trying to untie it. Allen. And Barnes pucks down the rebound. Smith and Earl a little bit off, and Butler has the ball and a chance to take the lead. That's one of those rusty plays right there. Kevin Smith didn't have the angle to make that pass decision. And at the other end, Kevin Smith does not have the position, the official rules. No, I think they're going to... No, they are not. Uh, he's going to get a charge, but the basket's going to be good. They say he released the ball before the charge. I'm not sure about that call. So the hoop counts, but a foul as well. to shoot the one-on-one. You know, Kevin Smith earlier told us that what he brings to the Iowa team will be defensive quickness. He said he, he's excited about getting back, but he's never nervous as a player. 5'11 and 165, you better never be nervous when you go out among these big guys. And of course, a weakness last year was his free throw shooting. Now a lot more confident. Right there, two of them. Only a 42% free throw shooter last year, but an excellent job in those two opportunities. 21 all, and Hawkeyes doing a terrific job as Butler tries to inbound, especially Chris Street. Chris Street just knocked that one back into the student section. That may be five if they're not careful. Pretty close. Relaford gets inside Winters. The Winters made him mess up the shot, and coming down with it is Kevin Smith. Street travels. Butler basketball, 11.54 to play in the first half, and this ball game all tied up at 21. It's been tied six times so far. We'll be back after these messages from your local. 3%, yet the score, still 21-21. Brenz length to the court deep, pulled down by Archbold. And Skinner gets all over him in the way, trying to prevent him from going to the basket, but in the process, picks up the foul. And I'll tell you, during the timeout as it ended, Archbold went over to the officials and said, Iowa is hand-checking me. They're putting their hands on my hips. Right there was the example. He pleaded his case, got himself a foul. Archbold's really a talented player in his back closing before the game, just in constant motion, but that time a mistake in looking bill makes him pay for it. Here's Skinner. Okay, that all started off defense. A great job by the Iowa defense on the out-of-bounds play underneath Butler's own basket to intercept and go. And that is a much-needed basket by Troy Skinner for his confidence. Skinner's bucket gives the Hawks the lead. And Butler has it deflected out-of-bounds off a Hawk, and so they still got it with a chance to tie the ball game with a two and take the lead with a three. Larry Tuck, winners right there. He got to that ball because he's quicker than A.C. Earl. may not be as tall, but he can react very quickly to a pass ball through the lane. Wilson, who's already got eight, now has 11 as he nails a three. He comes in averaging 9.6, but Michael Wilson is on fire and already has his average and gives Butler the lead at 24-23. 11.05 to play, first half. And you see the story there, and Butler really doing a good job with their three-point shooting this year and making it pay off in the win column. Here's Bowen, and the perimeter shooting has been red hot for Butler. Shooting by both teams. They've taken good shots, and they have made them. Right now, you've had Butler just shoot more from that three-point range than Iowa. Butler averages 82 points on the season, and Iowa almost 90, 89.9 to be specific. Coach Kyer was concerned about the depth of his team with Geis out of there. 
would his other players be able to step up, play more minutes, and play hard? Well, in the first half, the answer is yes. Davis doesn't get the roll, and Wilson has had a terrific first half, comes down with a rebound. And Bowen puts it through. The point guard for the Bulldogs had six, and Butler's lead swells to five at 28 to 23. Wide open, A.C. Earl. I don't think he realized how wide open he was going to be. And Coach Collier wants a travel. And A.C. Earl might have. Instead, A.C. with a basket and a chance at a three-point play. Skinner recognizes right away A.C. Earl. Wide open, makes the pivot move, goes up strong to get it. And then a late foul coming over the back. Relaford with his second foul. A.C. with eight. And still with eight. Moses, an offensive board. And a hoop. James Moses really trying to go to other parts of his game besides always relying on his shooting and scoring. So in one trip down the floor, Iowa cuts the deficit from five down to one. And the official, Dan Grissom, warns Chris Street about going too close to the line. He gave him one warning. Next time will be a technical. Barry Collier, you saw right up there to make sure that Chrisman issued that warning. Archbold for three. Relaford fouled by Rodell Davis as he grabbed the rebound. First foul on Davis. The Hawkeyes now guilty of their fifth. You know, Larry, the University of South Florida played the first game, won that. And you would think maybe a lot of the fans would leave, but I'll tell you, most of them have stayed to see a top 25 team Iowa and a spoiler like Butler. Butler not likely to be intimidated by the likes of Iowa. They've already won a game at Notre Dame this year. Archbold puts a move on Skinner, but he traveled as he did, and the Hawkeyes get the ball on the Butler turnover, and Iowa with a chance to regain the lead on this possession. Again, excellent defense on that out-of-bounds play, forcing Butler to go really like their third or fourth option to even have an offensive opportunity. Kevin Smith back into the Iowa lineup, replacing Skinner. Kevin last year averaged five points a game and had 41 steals. That's where you have to go, inside. Big the spin move. I'll tell you, that's a guard move right there. Indeed it is. Ten points for AC and another shot and a three-point play. AC Hero is going to draw more and more attention. Just a junior. As you interviewed Golden State Scout, he is here. Other people will be in tomorrow. AC with 11. He's been in double figures in every Iowa game this year. Now Val Barnes will come in as Iowa sets up the press. Bowen against Looking Bill. A technical foul. Whoa, and I'll tell you right now, Collier, he may go. He may get the second one. That's going to be close. Collier got nailed with a T in a hurry. If he gets the second, he's gone. The third-year coach of the Bulldogs is highly incensed. In fact, he may have received two, and I think he's been ejected. He has been. Two technicals called against Collier. The explosion was following the first one, and now he's out of there with his second one. I believe they were going to call him that first one for maybe being out of the box, the coach's box. He didn't like that call. And then he gets the second one. And he may come back one more time. He's going to talk to his assistant coaches. So Barry Collier is ejected with 9.51 to go in the first half as he leaves. Iowa leads by a score of 30 to 28. Now, Bowen drove, but I think by then Collier was already up and shouting at the official. And he is out of the box. They're getting one. And Val Barnes going to the line will get four free throws. Barnes has just hit his first, so three more for Val. And of course, he has made 10 of 11 on the year. Val is not shooting his threes well, but everything else inside the three-point line and those free throws, he has been canning with terrific accuracy. 
So it goes from a two-point Iowa lead to a five-point Iowa lead, and the Hawks are not done yet. Now misses that, but it's still an Iowa position. Collier has been ejected. Assistants Jay John and Doug Mitchell take over. The Hawkeyes have scored seven unanswered points. their biggest lead as Barnes hits again. Well, what a difference having Val Barnes go to the scoring guard to the off guard position. Great confidence, stroking the ball well, and it picks up his defensive intensity. Earl flags it down, and Looking Bill comes up with a loose basketball. The Hawks on a roll. And with the rebound is Wilson. And AC Earl. Didn't mean to do it. Reached over and almost stumbled into him and picked up the foul. It'll be the first on AC. Iowa likes to trap any opportunity. That time it would have been two 6'10 players trapping in that backcourt. Just a little reach. Official thought it was a foul. AC gets it. Comes back in for the Hawks. You're now on a 12-point run. We're five down at one point, and now they are seven up. Space of less than two minutes. Nine to go, first half. Quite a mismatch there. Arch Bold is 6'5 and a Kevin Smith, 5'11. Wilson. Smith delivers a beautiful pass to Looking Bell. That's two great passes by Kevin Smith. And I'll tell you, it will pick up the rest of the players on the team. They will work harder to get open because they know Kevin Smith is not going to score. He wants to give it up. And that is tremendous passing by the front line. Earl, Looking Bill, Tubbs. What a run. Pass. Hawkeyes have scored 16 unanswered points. Iowa with a big lead, 39-28. They've done it all at once. It had been close, but now Iowa leads by 11 of 39 to 28 with 8.18 to go in the first half. Travel the range through Northwest Airlines, committed to providing Iowa business travelers with the best on-time performance. Northwest, the number one on-time airline. Iowa continuing to shoot well, and the reason is high percentage shots inside Getting him off the steal in transition, 71%. An outstanding job by Iowa. And a good job by Butler as they nail it again. Archbold, red hot from the perimeter. He's an excellent player, really is. Offensively, just understands the game, gets himself open, and then makes it. That bucket ended a 13-point Iowa run. And Val Barnes, just aggressive. He could not do that at the point guard. The point guard's responsibility is, of course, to get back on defense. At the wing, he can go to the offensive class. Bren saves it. AC and Brenz fight for it. And his Butler whistle for the foul. For Brenz, his second foul. J.P. Brenz being aggressive. You'll find four Hawkeyes around the basket. That's what they're noted for, strong rebounding teams. They've led the nation once since Tom Davis has been the Hawkeye head man, and uh, J.P. Brins draws a foul of play. You're correct. The Brick Tubbs will go to the line. Tubbs just one out of six from the foul line this year. Brick averaging four. If he hits this free throw, he'll be right there. And he has really been a pleasant surprise. Coming in, giving Chris Street a blow for maybe about 10 or 12 minutes a game. Brig has hit that outside three-point shot. There's Bowen bringing it ahead for Butler. They try to clear out for Archbold and Barnes fouls. First foul on Val. And that will put the Hawkeyes over the limit. The one thing that happens in the rotation, you just see Moses coming in for Barnes. You're finding now that Paul Lusk is not in the rotation, not getting any minutes on the, the 10 deep. Here's a big statistic on why Iowa's got this run underway. 
We talked about the beginning of the game when Street and Earl, number one, number three, and rebounding in the Big Ten. You need to go to your strength, go inside. Hawkeyes have recognized it and done a good job. You see it, got a good look here. Baron Archbold. Look at that 84% free throw shooting. That's a slump. Yeah, he's down seven points from his nation leading 91% last year. Davis beats Archbold into the front court and gets it. Davis with nine, right at his average, 45-32 the Hawkeyes. Ford looking for Wilson, glad to save it. Rez, nice pass back to Wilson. Good hustle that time by the Butler Bulldogs. Yeah, Iowa with 45 points and still seven minutes left to go in this first half. Look out. AC with 13 his own, of his own in this first half. Butler just cannot find a way to combat the height of the Iowa team. Pass last touch by a Hawkeye, and so it'll be Butler ball. As we said, A.C. Earl, like a train down the middle, the shortest distance between two points, a straight line. That's what Earl ran from basket to basket. Kevin Smith back in for Iowa. And Wade Looking Bill also comes in. Davis will leave for the Hawks. And Brenz will check out for Butler, replaced by Wade Galt. Archbold gets the return feed and a nice dump off for Galt. 47 36. Hawks and Butler a chance to get back in the ballgame and cut it at least down to single figures. We talked about Kevin Smith making some great passes. He's also made a couple poor choices, that being one of them there. The collection by Street who tried to save it, but a foul spotted. And it will go against Butler. And now Iowa, of course, will go to the line the rest of this first half every time there is a foul for two shots. Street to the line. His first free throw opportunity. Going with his second foul for Butler. They've now committed 10, so everything is a two-shot foul for Iowa. For the final 629, it is hard to believe. You look up at that scoreboard at 48-36 and see still how much time remains. Iowa could well have 60 points in the first half. Archbold. He tried to draw the foul there, a little lenient shot. No contact, threw his shot off. And so the foul called against Archbold is first. And the Hawkeyes will be right back at the line. Well, all season long, and you see it in Tom Davis' teams virtually every year. Iowa's shot more free throws than their opponents. For example, coming into this game, the Hawkeyes had attempted 244. Opponents had shot 86. They do a great job of getting the ball low when they come down offensively. And that gives you a lot of opportunities to go to the free throw line and put the other team in foul problems. I know fans like to see that three-point shot. If you look around the country historically, your best teams year in and year out will get the ball inside, inside. They may kick it back out, but it's an inside game first. Bren's back in for Butler. He's their starter in the pivot as AC goes for point number 15 of this first half. And Brenz has the rebound. But really, you look at all the players on the floor, and for the most part, they're all pretty good shooters from either inside or outside. This balance is one of the things that makes them tough to defend. And Bowen shows Bowen. you right there why. Yeah, just 5'8 or 5'9. He's a good matchup for Kevin Smith. His first three, but he already has 12 points, double his average. Five and a half left in this high-scoring first half. Bowen for two in a row, right there. With both teams liking this up-tempo game, I'll tell you, the lead is not safe. As again, another excellent pass by Kevin Smith. Ten points can vanish pretty quickly. It was 11, and now it is down to six, and the basket will count. You want to look at an NBA offensive-type move. 
Archibald just knows where the man is, looks for the foul the entire way as he receives the pass, well, leads right Street in to Chris Street. Chris cannot go ahead and block it. Okay. He leans right into the arm, draws the foul, makes the basket, makes the contact first, keeps control of his body to lay it in off the glass. That is vintage Archibald right there. Street's second foul, so he'll go to the Hawkeye bench and a chance at a three-point play for Archibald, who has 11 already. And there's the free throw story. Butler doing better from the percentage standpoint, but Iowa getting a lot more of it. You get a lot more. And shooting 69%. That's better than they have been shooting. Here's a rare sight. Archibald, who, as Mac told you, led the country in free throw shooting last year, actually missed one. It's still a six-point game, though, as Butler has scored six unanswered points. Hawkeyes had built a 13-point lead. You look, Iowa not dribble penetrating there, trying to pass penetrate. Get an open shot after seven or eight passes. Skinner, he's hit two good outside shots. He's had a good look at the basket both times. Like I said, got to help his confidence. Skinner's fifth three-pointer of the year, and the Iowa lead is 9, 52 to 43. Allen trying to answer with a three, and a tie up on the rebound. Possession arrow is going to keep it in the Butler end. you that the Butler coach, Barry Collier, drew two technical fouls at 9.51 in the first half, so he is gone for the evening. The three-point totals there. Iowa's had trouble shooting three-pointers on the year, just not taking many tonight. It's still Butler ball. A couple of teams really going after it tonight. Well, offensively, the players have got to like this game. Everybody wants to get up and down the court. Look for good high percentage shots. Both teams shooting well. That's the new brain trust now of Butler. Jay John and Doug Mitchell running the show now at the ejection of Collier. Good play by Brick Tugs. He and Chris Street really work on that stealing and knocking down the inbounds pass. And they talk about it when they come in and off the floor. Tubbs may have learned something or has got some help from Street that time. Hawkeyes want to try and go inside off a hard cut off the baseline, see if they're able to get it in there. Butler comes up with the loose basketball. Bowen leads the Bulldog charge. In a crowd, it is golf, and he is fouled. Skinner caught inside on a big guy and picks up his second foul. Well, Skinner and Archibald kind of went at each other early. Now Skinner drops down to give help. Well, there's no question about the foul. And I think Skinner also got a shot maybe in the mouth. He is bleeding and goes over to the Iowa bench to have the trainers take a look at him. He's running in the Hawkeye family earlier this week. Uh, Coach Close, uh, one of the assistant coaches in a pickup game, got cut on the inside of his mouth, had about 12 stitches. So we hope uh, it's not that difficult for Troy Skinner, but he is heading off, it looks like, to uh, the training room. So Skinner will get looked at. So now Kevin Smith, who of course, has practiced with the team and has a lot of condition, is now going to have to go for some stretch, perhaps. Well, they may look now and move Val Barnes back to the point to give Smith a break. Mike Galt hits the first free throw, and now Moses replaces Davis before Galt can shoot his second. Galt didn't play much last year, but it started the last two games prior to the night for Butler. And that move is a change of the rotation also. Moses now comes in for three position, so you've got Moses, Smith, and Barnes in there at the same time. The Hawkeyes have led by as many as seven. The current lead, rather, is 13. The current lead, seven. We'll be back. Start of the court. I tell you, you can just take one step from the bleachers and be right on that playing surface. Look at how the scoring breaks down so far. Front court scoring, I was had the advantage. Back court scoring, other advantage to yeah, Butler. The back court. So how long can you live with the outside shot versus the inside shot? That's the question to be answered. Good screens. And Moses tries to take advantage of it. Red's got in the way. And I'll tell you, Winters just blew up over Allen's back. 
Got a great tip and the ball went in. He exploded up there for his first two. Hawkeyes have been over the 100 point mark twice this year with a high of 108 against UNI. Butler scored 100 once this year. And both teams are certainly on pace to do that. We have an NBA type score. I tell you, Iowa's even getting in that with the zone defense. A lot of times that'll slow a team down. Where winners, I think, are going to be called for another foul. And for James, it's his second. But the zone generally will cause a team to slow down their offense. But with Butler, since they've been shooting the three so well, it's almost hurried their offense. They've come down, got a good look at the basket, and put it up. At the free throw line, Wade Galt. Two out of two tonight and 10 out of 12 on the season from the line. So the senior from Logansport, Indiana, not the guy you want to foul. Again, it's an assistant coach, Jay John, now running the Butler Bulldogs because head coach Barry Collier has been ejected for drawing two technical fouls. Golf still perfect at the line, 54-47. Now pressure at midcourt, and that really leaves the backside open. Hawkeyes run their offense higher and wider. Moses gets the roll. James with four points now, and he passes Steve Carfino and becomes the 23rd all-time leading scorer in Iowa history. A couple of more, and he'll pass Jerry Jones. Right there, Brims. His father played at Wisconsin, Jack Brims. Remember him well? That was a pretty good player, as I recall. Yes, he was. Halftime of tonight's ball game. We'll have our Budweiser scoreboard. Lots of Big Ten teams involved in tournament play. Also stats and highlights of the first half. Boy, a shooter's touch there by Moses. Behind the basket. Difficult angle. Got it to go down softly. And now he passes Jones and moves into 22nd place in the all-time Iowa scoring list. Barnes with the personal foul, and for Val, his second. So 2-10 to play in the first half, 58-47 Iowa as Butler goes to the line in the person of Tim Bowen. Tim Bowen shooting two. Bowen only a 59% free throw shooter, his first visit to the strike. He has 14 points already, and that's already a season high for him. I'll tell you one thing, Larry, I've noticed, and both teams would like it since they're an up-tempo team, is the fact the ball comes through the net very quickly. They are loose nets. So you can get the ball and start to run. And they called over and back. James Moses is trying to explain, I was in the backcourt, I caught it, and I came over. Moses didn't see it that way at all, and he immediately turned to the Hawkeye bench. James got to get his head back in the game. He can't be explaining it to the official. It's too late now. For all the scoring, really a pretty good turnover total for both ball clubs. And neither team, of course, taking a lot of advantage. There just haven't been that many turnovers. Remember, those turnovers came fairly early in the game. I'd say 15 turnovers at this pace isn't bad. No. Boy, they get that ball inside, kick it out, and move it to the opposite wing. And you can't leave Wilson open. Now they find open people very well. And Archibald, unselfish, giving up his offensive scoring chance to the team. Street on the roll. Foul called on Butler. Street does not get the hoop. I'll tell you, I have to say these officials have been very consistent in the first game and the second game. Obviously not the same set of officials, but they just did not give the charge call. It's almost always been a block. Player pretty stationary right there. Let's get another look. Street coming down. Friends. I'll tell you, it's pretty, pretty stationary, stationary there, yeah, too. Pretty stationary. But as I said, it has been consistent. They have not given the charge call much tonight. The Preds with his third foul, and he's really played well tonight. And Paul Lusk now checks into the lineup. First time this evening as Barnes comes out, and that leaves Moses at the three position. So for the last uh, minute and a half, A.C. Earl will check in. So you got A.C. and Street in the power positions. And again, Troy Skinner taken out of the ball game after suffering what appeared to be a cut in the mouth. Inside the mouth, it looked like, although lots of blood coming from that cut. May have been on the outside. 60-52 the score. I with an eight-point lead. Tubbs is back in. 
course, Butler, as you indicated, just for uh, anybody that's tuned in, they're without their coach. Coach Collier got ejected. Two quick technicals. Now, recall the last time a coach was ejected against the Hawkeyes, he was also from the state of Indiana. Yeah, that was Gene Cady. That was in Iowa City. Went into the press room to watch the rest of the game. Collier doesn't have that luxury. He might be in our truck watching it, though, because the game is being televised here in the state of Florida, but he might be in the truck watching. Butler, an NIT team last year, so it's no surprise they're giving the Hawkeyes a challenge. Well, Collier put great new life into this Butler program. And, of course, being from the state of Indiana, you can recruit the players that maybe Purdue and Indiana would overlook. AC double team shoots anyway, almost got it to roll down for him, and Rutherford's got the rebound. Lust guards Wilson. Thus far, I was not done a very good job of guarding Wilson, who's got 15 first half points. And then Butler would just go for one shot. They have a, a spread offense as the clock winds down to 18 seconds and this game is far from over when you see 52 points put up by butler in the first half is wilson still hot not this time relaford keeps it alive but ac earl comes out with it Smith. earl yes. earl a follow-up at the buzzer a nice finish by ac to give him 16 first half points get another look at that one mac a spectacular finish for iowa Kevin Smith looking right up at the clock immediately after getting the ball. Sees he had seven seconds. Comes down, says he'll take the three at four. That gives the team the opportunity to do just what AC did. Get a rebound and put it back. It's the kind of game the fans love. High scoring, 62-52. Hawks have the lead. We'll be back to take a look at the first half right after this. Kevin Smith. So there's Troy with a bandage. He had 10 stitches after that cut on his chin. 10 stitches should be able to play. Yeah, like, like an old mule skinner, though, I think Troy will be back in there. He'll be ready to play. Anybody who's tough enough with Parasail ought to be able to shrug <laughs> off 10 stitches, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And he did that on this trip to Florida for Iowa. So that one change from the starters as Skinner started the ball game. Smith is now in, and ACO picks up where he left off with his 18th point. He had a career high, what, 32 points against Iowa State. Dude, this type of game will allow him to set another career high. Going for the steal and getting it is Davis. He's not going to get in foul trouble because Butler will not take the ball inside. And with his height advantage, he'll be able to get offensive rebounds, take it in, and score. You mean like that? Like that. Two buckets in the half, and now 20 in the game for AC. Biggest lead of the night for the Hawks. Right there you see the, the shake and bake of both the defender and the offensive player, Kevin Smith, staying right with Bowen. Drenz backs in on Earl, and AC has his second block, and Street has the rebound. Once again, AC Earl just begging for the ball because he knows he can score. Boom! What a start. Three shots, three baskets. In the half for AC, and it's 68-52. I tell you, when you score like that, you don't get tired either. You want to stay in the game as long as possible. Lacey has that scores mentality, thinking he can score every time he gets his hands on the ball. So far, that's been pretty true. Right there were teammates against teammates in the NIT. European tour last summer. Archibald challenging AC Earl. Goes for the jam and finally missed one, and that was the closest shot he'd taken. Moses tries to save. Back to Johnson saving uh, James. And I'll tell you, AC really upset with himself. Up there for the dunk, an easy one. He just hit it off the back part of the rim. Michael Wilson picking up the foul. His second, that's the first call against the team in the second half. Here's AC again. Yeah, he said, I'm taking over. Yeah, he made up for it. Eight points for AC in the first two minutes and eight seconds of this second half. And it's 70-54, Iowa with their biggest lead. And so Butler will have to pass. AC Earl has got every one of them. Yeah, you can turn off the heat here in Florida and turn on the AC for Iowa. Ooh, that's almost poetic. I'm quite <laughs> impressed. 
this great hustle. Let's see who ends up with it. Well, nobody. Jump ball. But Butler has got the possession arrow. Roddy Street making the tackle. <laughs> Reminds me that a lot of people watching from San Diego tonight out there to cheer the Hawkeyes in the Holiday Bowl. We hope that they're enjoying the telecast as well as everybody back in the state of Iowa. And Iowa's really, with AC dominating, had the way of the paint inside. Well, it's a party time in Iowa for the weekend. Friday night, Saturday night, and of course next Monday, the Holiday Bowl. March Bowl backs at home. <laughs> can score points in bunches too so though they trail by 14 don't count them out of this one underneath it's davis rodell just a steady steady performer for the hawkeyes hawks build the lead back to their biggest at 16. here comes the lean-in shot over the edge stretch on the base he would not go down taylor puts it back through another offensive rebound for Butler. boy they're getting on hustle because they don't have the size in fact, they're being out-rebounded on the average this year, a half a rebound a game, even though they are 8-2, an unusual statistic. AC misses his second shot of the six that he has taken in this half. And I'll tell you, Chris Street just got hipped out of there, and I think they're going to call the foul on Street. <laughs> he doesn't believe it. Let's see what happens. AC will trickle that ball over. Now watch Street. Chris Street is third. I really couldn't tell, but he got hipped out. As he tried to go up two players sandwiched him. Called him for the foul. Street's third foul. Butler tries to cut the Iowa 14-point lead. Archbold will try to do that. He kind of hit that one off the palm of his hand. No rotation. Moses for three. Looking Bill for two. Moses shooting it off the break. Iowa. Offensive players going right to the glass in case of the miss. No, no job. Smith rides Archbold, and Smith gets called for the foul. But Archbold really looks to the basket when he gets the ball, and if there's any opportunity to drive it to the hoop, he's going to go because he wants to get fouled at 91%. Being a great free throw shooter, it's an easy way to pump up the average. Tubbs, looking Bill, Barnes into the Iowa lineup. And like we said, like an old mule skinner, here comes Troy. Ten stitches in his chin, no problem. He's a tough competitor, has been ever since he's been in Iowa. And he draws the assignment. He's on Archbold right now. Archbold is 6'5", and of course, Skinner is 6 even. And he is playing Archbold man-to-man -man by Barnes. He's also playing man-to-man. -man. The other three Hawkeyes are playing, looks like a zone. Archbold takes advantage of the mismatch to score his 15 points. We'll try and watch that next time down court. I don't know if Butler just didn't have any ball movement and allowed Iowa to play in those positions or if it's a design defense. Tubbs gets the inside pass. Barnes will try. Six foot Barnes comes in there and takes it away from looking Bill. Tubbs and Earl to score. And I'll tell you, I think Val's got to be happy to be at that off guard. He can be a much more active player scoring-wise. Average 7.6 playing the point. He's got 11 tonight. His first game at off guard. You're right. Bowen. He's got 15 points. And it's 76-62. The Hawks lead with just under 15 to play. I say four people drop on Earl, and he can still go up. goes to Butler. James Winter is about to give A.C. Earl a breather. A.C. went a long time, over five minutes before getting this break. But that's what he's going to have to do. He's going to have to give you 30, 32 minutes in the Big Ten. If the Hawkeyes hang on, they face the University of South Florida, the host team in this tournament, tomorrow for the championship. And we'll be on the air at the same time. 8 o'clock in Iowa. Tubbs fouls. We talked about A.C. Earl and Darren Archbold traveling together on the NIT All-Star team in Europe this summer. A third teammate is Rodenko Dobros, who plays for USF, and we'll have a chance to see him tomorrow if Iowa holds on to their lead, and he is quite a player. Six foot seven point guard who really looks to score. Six foot seven, 24-year-old point guard from Yugoslavia. Archbold again driving. 
Iowa players not able to slide over. You've got to immediately start with a drop step to the basket and then slide over to the baseline side to stop that move. Now Val Barnes moves his left foot quickly, and he doesn't. He almost gets across with his right foot. Back to live action as it comes out to the midfoot line to Bowen. Wilson had a hot first half, but he's had a tough time getting the ball to go down in the second half. Troy looks for that shot right there. Has hit a three earlier, not this time, and it is Butler ball. 76-62, Iowa with the lead, 14-01 to play. And into the lineup for Butler comes Wade Galt. And Troy Skinner, again, a nasty cut on his chin, 10 stitches, but shaking it off and able to play. See if Butler looks for Archibald again. Try and get him at the free throw line or into the offense more. Iowa has really not done a good job of checking him out as Iowa goes to the zone. Wilson was hot in the first half, but he's 0-3 in the second half, and looking, Bill has the rebound. The Hawks score here. They'll have their biggest lead. Street. 7 for Street, good execution for the Hawks as they open the lead to 78 to 62. Hey, you talk about cleaning up post play. That's what the officials have wanted to do. It's a point of emphasis in the rule book this year. In this game, okay, they have really called what you would have to say are cleanup type fouls. Winners just had his arm on the back. No pressure. Called the foul. Very similar to what happened to Brick Tubbs a couple times down the court. We saw the Butler bench a moment ago. Minus head coach Barry Collier. He has been ejected. Winners, by the way, with three fouls tonight. Into the Butler lineup comes John Taylor, averaging nine points a game, but has just six so far. Iowa's defense has really done a good job identifying as Relaford limps out. Identifying how Butler wants to get the ball in bounds. Has really had some trouble with it. Off the sneaker of Galt, and it's Hawkeye basketball. Game being played in the 10,000 seat Sun Dome in Tampa, 12 year old facility, an air supported fabric dome, much like UNI's dome. Yeah, it is, only this is designed strictly for basketball and concert. Smaller than the Uni Dome, but the same air supported roof. And I'd say it's a great place to play college basketball. Noisy, as we said at the beginning of the game, they have fireworks going off inside here, and uh, they got some great activities to create interest. And of course, you're in a pro town. Tampa here, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, deciding what coach they want. You Not fire Williamson him. fired him today. <laughs> yeah, fire him. Buy, you know, get the next one. You look Tur at that turnover statistic, Mac. I don't know that Iowa has a turnover in the second half. I don't think so. And, Jump spotted inside. Yeah. Tom Davis doesn't believe it. He wanted a defensive foul on Butler. Looks like they're going to call an offensive pushing off foul. I believe it'll be on AC Earl. And that is AC's first. Driving his golf, coming, trying to close is Davis, and the charge is called. Oh, what a job by Rodell Davis to get there. Uh, Rodell and Troy Skinner got there to take the charge. And I'll tell you, Galt makes a poor decision. Not a ball handling player. He just runs over Troy. You've got Archibald, your leading scorer, great pro, free throw shooter on the other side, and you don't give him the ball. You've got to get it over there, Troy. Wonder if Galt was so concerned about Davis High, he didn't even see Skinner low. And now Galt's going to be called for a foul at the other end, holding Earl. Galt with three fouls, two in the last 20 seconds, and Kevin Smith. Just eligible tonight, comes back in. But he was always eligible by NCAA and Big Ten standards. Had some coursework to clear up at Iowa, and he's thrilled to be back. Yeah, he said he just needed to take one course, get it completed, get a good grade. And he told us he's very happy to be back. Now Taylor fouling on the inbound, and it's his third, and already. Foul's beginning to mount up in a hurry. Six fouls against Iowa, four against Butler. Here's Davis. And you know Street will go up strong with this one. 
Easy two points for him. And the two things that Coach Collier worried about was fatigue and foul situations. And right now you're starting to see some of the fatigue set in. Butler not getting good looks at the basket as he had earlier. And the fouls, as you said, mounting up. Reds on the drive, and now the loose basketball is Butler's. Archibald's going to look for three here, but he can't get a hold of it. Taylor got in the way. We talked a moment ago about the depth, and one of the real factors for Butler is that their second-leading scorer, Jermaine Geis, can't play. He suffered a broken bone in his right hand two games ago and is out for another three weeks. They really miss him in a game like this. Well, they really stretch it defensively with Geis in there. They put Archibald on one wing, Geis on the other, and then they just like to, to shoot it up, dump it down inside for easy opportunity, two-man game. Going for Eight travel. Yeah. The street on the travel, the ball back to Butler with 11.52 left to play in the ball game. I was open their biggest lead of the game, up by 18. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. 12 minutes to go. That guy can't see through those sunglasses, can he? <laughs> <laughs> lots of Hawkeye fans in the stands and lots of former Iowans who have come down here to live or at least spend the winter here enjoying the game. And they're certainly enjoying this Iowa second half run. Keep by A.C. Earl. Reds on the turnaround over Earl. One of the few times they have really gotten the ball inside. <laughs> Butler having to go to the outside game. Challenge that time. Got it inside. I'll tell you, I was up 16 points, but I don't think the Hawkeyes are going to feel comfortable with that lead the way they've seen Butler come back and want to play an up-and-down game. They're willing to keep going. Oh, the way we've seen them shoot from the outside, you're right. No lead is safe at this point with 11.30 to play. Now Florida waits in the wings. They won tonight, 96-77 over Northeastern Illinois. They will bring a 7-1 record into the title game tomorrow with victories over Florida, Florida State, and Wyoming, among others. Well, you've really got to understand that they have won the State of Florida Basketball Championship by beating Florida and Florida State. Now, those are two very good athletic programs. And USF said, nope, we're going to win it. Backing in, AC. He traveled. Butler with the ball, 11.05 to play, and they trail by 16. Hey, that one looked like a pretty good move. He spun and just lifted that back foot as he shot. That should not be a travel. And the block almost by AC. I think he may get a piece of it, but Tux comes down with a rebound. Certainly altered that shot. Renz had real trouble getting over the outstretched arm. Archbold with the rebound. He rebounds very well for a player who is only 6'5". In fact, that's what A.C. Earl really picked up watching him this summer. And they played together in the NIT Select Team. Brenz is going to go to the line. Inside battle. And now Butler has continued to go inside more and more since that last time out. They want to keep establishing an inside game over the last 10 minutes so they can kick it back out and have open three-point shooters. Iowa's come out to defend them, leaving that lane area open for easy opportunities or to get fouled. Earl's foul, his second. You mentioned earlier that Renz has really struggled just trying to get shots tonight. He has only two baskets in this game, and he's averaging 13, so usually he's a lot more of the offense than A.C. Earl has allowed him to be tonight. A.C. Earl is just rarely establishing himself as a big-time defensive player, and by that, it isn't just the fact you can block shots, even though he does five a game. He also alters what you want to do offensively, and that's why Iowa can be such a, an effective team pressing and coming out on a pressure man-to-man -man half court offense or defense. Iowa now out rebounding Butler by five, which is a turnaround from the first half. And Iowa was out rebounded by four, so the Hawkeyes have really done a much better job on the boards in the second half. And the foul called against the Bulldogs. And that's only the team six, so it is not a shooting foul. They will take it out underneath the basket. Darren Archbold picking it up. It's his second. Wilson gets in the way, but also gets a part of the arm. And I'll tell you, the fans don't like it. Neither does the Butler bench. And Wilson's not too happy. 
But AC doesn't mind because he will now go to the line. Well, I'll tell you, it looked like a lot of weather. <laughs> it certainly did. Rule 24 points. AC Earl has done a great job tonight being an offensive player. And I'll tell you, he said, I kind of like play like a forward in the center's body, but I think like a guard. And I think that's pretty descriptive <laughs> Very of yeah. AC's own game and AC set it because he looks the pass. He can ball handle. You saw that earlier in this game. And he is not a, a wide body type post player. He is more like a, a forward body but I will play him at the post position. So, very accurate statement by Ace. It really tells you the mindset that he brings to basketball. And he's one of the smarter basketball player mentality people that Iowa has. I'll tell you, he and Kevin Smith really understand the game, what they want to try and do. And when I say that, what I'm talking about are things like angles, where to set up a defender, or defensively how to funnel a man into a difficult defensive or uh, offensive situation. That's what those two players understand very well. Bowen draws the foul, and the fans, I don't think, are so much for butlers. They are anti-official at this point in the game. Yeah, the whistles have started to come out. Uh, they've blown quite a few here in the last three or four minutes. Winters his third point, and it's 83-68 Iowa. 9.58 to play. Of course, Skinner, blood all over his uniform from that 10-stitch cut on his chin. Left over from a mesh unit. That's why I won't parasail like he did. I thought that's why I'd look after parasailing, but that's a basketball injury that Troy sustained. As you said, Troy said he was really scared when he first took off parasailing. Now, he may feel like the basketball court is where he needs to be more scared. More dangerous, anyway. Bren stepping out of bounds, giving the Hawks the ball. But at this level, that's how you have to play. You've got to play tough. You expect some of that happening. You said it earlier, Troy has played his whole career without any regard for his body. He probably leads the team in stitches drawn over the last four years, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I think he's the Iowa human bruise. Bowen races it up the floor for Butler all the way. And Winters has the rebound. That's what happens when you get tired. You really don't make a good choice. You just make a choice to decide to get rid of it. He went one on four with nothing. Now it's two on O, oh, and Wilson finishes. And the lead back down to 14. We say again, you've got to understand this Butler team, 14 points is not a big deal. They will go ahead and play with you offensively. And Troy Skinner working his way up court ends up getting fouled. Troy Lowe mad at himself, not being able to get it in scoring position. Skinner Brent's drives, riding him. yeah. Brent just gets a saddle, puts it on him. Four fouls on Bren, Skinner to the line. He's not been there tonight, but on the season, he's 26 out of 32. That's 81%. Bren's the first player for either team with more than three. Galt will replace Bren's. And Moses will replace Looking Bill. Once again, you see Moses going to the three position as you see the blood from the chin. It looks like he's wrestled <laughs> one of those Florida Gators, doesn't he? <laughs> Skinner with six. And the Hawk lead is 15. First time that an Iowa basketball team has ever played in the state of Florida. That's really amazing when you stop and think. 95 years of Iowa basketball. And of course, this is the year 100 years of basketball itself. Consider that Iowa has played in Alaska and finally in Hawaii. Can't be too many more states the Hawks have yet to visit. This is Taylor. Boy, Winters boy. has really rebounded well. Yeah, he took that one right away from Galt. Galt inside position. Winters just came over the top. And Moses finishes it off, his eighth point. And Iowa now throws to an 18-point lead once again, and this equals their biggest. Iowa ball. You can see the fatigue setting in arch ball that time. Nope. And, uh, no, an overrule. Now they're going to overrule back. Nope. But arch ball making a poor choice here, driving again between three Iowa players, losing it. 
needs to set himself up square to the basket and make good decisions. Again, it's Wilson on the drive. Michael Wilson, 16 first half points. He now has six second half points, but really got those just in the last couple of minutes. Iowa did a much better job on him through the first 10 minutes of the second half. Clock down to 8.05, and the Hawks leading by 16. And the rebound the situation, again, it's really turned around in the second half, Nick. Well, I'll tell you, Iowa, that is their trademark, is to dominate on the rebounds. They did not do it in the first half, and they are now. Winners is equal the season high, six tonight, six against Drake early in the season. And, of course, winners then sat out four ball games with a back injury. And guess who gets this one? <laughs> Almost looked like the replay of the last rebound. Uh, he's a very physical player. He's getting a little tired right now. And that's a, a quick extra hop, a skip. And Kevin says, me, travel? Okay. And the answer is yes. And so we have a timeout. 7.32 left in the ballgame. The Hawkeyes trying to win. Lots of Iowans in the stands here at the Sun Dome in Tampa. Hey, Davenport. Hello there, huh? Quad Cities. The drive by Kevin Smith. AC gets pushed down, and Bowen comes up with it for Butler. Here's Wilson. That was good defense by Kevin Smith, even though Butler scored. Took away the point guard, his drive to the basket, then stepped in position, and made the man shoot a four-foot jump shot. And that for Wilson, a career-high 24 points. <laughs> the only way to do these things is have quick feet. And that's what Kevin Smith brings to this Iowa team. Spoke of the Quad Cities a moment ago as we take a look at the leading scores in the ballgame. He's the Earl and Michael Wilson. Of course, Val Barnes hitting again. And that ball almost goes out of bounds. AC Earl retrieves it. As you said, it might at halftime. That's really become a factor, and the Hawkeyes have simply worn the Bulldogs down in the second half. Moses goes for the reverse layup and gets fouled. Are they going to call it on? Guess they're going to call it on AC on the push. Good bounce pass inside. Moses uses the glass. That's a shot he likes a lot. Very effective. And now I'll tell you, that, that's got to be a hard one to see. That official had to look through three players to find AC or on the foul. But he did. AC's got three, and the line goes J.P. Brent. Mentioned to start to save the Quad Cities a moment ago. Butler Sports Information Director Jim McGrath spent a lot of time in the Quad Cities. People may remember him in the early days of the Quad Cities golf tournament. He was the PR director, also the SID at Augustana College. Of course, Augustana College, as you see AC Earl put that shot in. It was AC Earl's father that played football at Augustana. That's 28 for AC, and that's the end of the line for J.P. Brent. That's a strong move right there. Got position. Brent's really tried to hip him out early before he even got the ball. Unable to do so. And then Earl just takes it home. Brent's out with six points and still 6.25 to play. So if AC has been unstoppable with Brent's leaning on him all night, Butler's really got a problem trying to contain AC now as he goes to the line in quest of his 29th point. Getting close to that career high. Galt replaces Brenz. Galt is 6'6", and they'll be going against 6'10", A.C. Earl. Cubs also win for Iowa. This is for number 29. AC's free throw shooting has gotten better. He's at five in a row. Other than the bad couple games he had earlier in December, AC is a good free throw shooter. Not great, but certainly very good. 70%, and I would imagine by next year, he'll realize if he can make another couple more percentage points, that's going to help his pro prospects. I think if you break down AC's free throw percentage, there were, as you say, a couple of games he missed seven and eight free throws, but overall, it wouldn't be bad to take those games out. Moses. Nice shot. That one floated up there. It looked like it was going to be short. Just kept going. The Hawks are three away from their third 100-point-plus game this year. Skinner leads the charge. Nice pass to Barnes. 
Oh, great oh pass. yeah. Great pass by Barnes there. Oh, my. 31. Count the basket. She's excited. So she. Skinner. A no-look pass. Barnes just says, behind my back. AC. Heading up. Boy. Four on two break. Good execution. Good choice by Skinner. And the finisher, I'll tell you, he is becoming an excellent finisher in college basketball. Tried to tie his career high, could not do it on that time. And Barnes can't save it, and it is Butler ball. Winners in. And AC, with 31 points, goes out. By the way, the record in one game in this tournament, and it's in his ninth year, Craig Beard of Samford, 39 points, back in the opening year of this tournament in 1982. I say if the game were tighter, closer, I think AC would have a chance, you know, maybe to break it. But with this point differential, I don't know if we even see AC anymore in this game. Another one tomorrow night against the University of South Florida. They'll come in with only one loss, and as we mentioned, the mythical state championship in Florida. Davis. And the Hawkeyes are over the 100 mark for the third time this year. With their high 108 against Northern Iowa. March Bowl. Uh, Prig had the ball and then got it stripped from him. Got to bring it down strong. Only two starters on the floor for Iowa tonight at this particular moment. Skinner and Davis, if you missed the start of the ball game, with Kevin Smith back at the point, Troy Skinner earned a starting call tonight as Val Barnes has been shifted to the number two guard, which he played last year, and he certainly responded well tonight with 13 points. Now, going that off guard position really has helped his confidence. Barnes looking to be a power player inside, tries to get to the basket, gets cut off by Galt, and he is done, I believe. He has fouled out with a total of 430 left to play and six points. Now, that last foul, of course, was against Barnes. Basically, Galt got at least three of the fouls and maybe four against A.C. Earl. So, Renz fouled out guarding A.C. For the most part, Galt fouled out trying to stop A.C. Cyclones, last time Iowa played, lost a couple of players trying to guard A.C. He just is a tough player for anybody to try to defend. Iowa does a real nice job of getting Earl in position to be fouled, and that's critical. When you get the ball low, you don't want to have the opportunity to let Iowa have easy baskets. As here's Barnes, who, if you look, shoots 60% from two-point range, and he struggled. I mean, really struggled at 6% from three-point range. I think you're going to see that three-point range shot percentage go up. I'll tell you, the 60% from two, though, is awfully good. That's one of 16 at three-point range. And Allen puts it in for Butler. Chime is coming to the lineup for the Hawks. Bill Chime wearing number 30. It's just his third ball game. Of course, he was redshirted last year, freshman out of Houston, Texas. Now you're seeing Lusk in there at the three position with Webb playing a five position. Webb in for the first time in the ball game. He is 6'8 out of San Jose, California, averaging 1.6. Archbold shooting there, but I think it is too late now. Hawkeyes up 20, 343 left to go in this game. Seven and a half and 18 in the game for Archbold. Hawkeyes going for a season high now, six points away from that, leading a 102 to 82 with 330 to play. Again, Butler playing without head coach Barry Collier. He was ejected. 9.50 to go in the first half. Got back-to-back -back technicals. And it was last touch by Iowa. It will be Butler ball. And a timeout is taken. It comes with three minutes and 18 seconds left in the ball game. Hawks on their way to a lopsided win. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. 3.12 to play tomorrow night. There'll be a couple of teams with 7-1 records as South Florida and Iowa will meet for the championship in this tournament. And time into the scoring column for the first time in this Hawkeye point explosion. 
I tell you, Kevin Smith likes the challenge. He's taking arch balls right now. By the way, that bucket for Chime, his first field goal of the season. He'd scored three points on free throws prior to the night. Kevin Smith drawing the foul. Kevin mm -hmm. Monty Archbold, really trying to move those feet, cut him off. It's called for a little bump and reach. Archbold with 18 tonight. The Hawkeyes have held him below his average. Really, he's had to work hard for the now 19. Stay up, guys. Stay up. Hands back, man. Hands back. But they're about to suffer just their third loss of the year. And all of them to Big Ten teams. Indiana beat them 97-73, and Purdue turned the back 76-70, although that was a game that Butler had the lead in late. In the final two and a half minutes of this one. What a nice debut for Kevin Smith. You can see really Tom Davis and the coaching staff wants to give Kevin Smith as many minutes as possible. You know, as a fan, you may sit there and say, why play Kevin Smith? He could get injured. you got to remember, this is his first game. There's only two more preseason games. you got to give Kevin Smith as much game experience as possible because you just can't duplicate that in practice. To the free throw line for Butler. Two guys left. Two! as Kevin Smith picks up his third foul. Will be Danny Allen. Allen with five. I was leading score tonight. A.C. Orr with 31 points. Also in double figures, Barnes with 14. Lopsided win for the Hawks tonight. To go to seven and one. And again, tomorrow, they'll take on a team with also a 7-1 record, the South Florida Bulls. They'll have the home floor advantage, and they really do have quite a following, even though the students are on break. Webb and a crowd puts the shot in. He is fouled and counts the basket. That's the type of aggressiveness Webb needs to play with to get back in that uh, rotation of the top 10. Be a factor inside, be strong, go up scoring and go to the free throw line and make it. The basket by Webb means everybody who has played for Iowa tonight, and that's everybody who's eligible to play. But Lust has scored. And then, of course, assuming that Bartles... And here goes Paul. He's going to have the opportunity to score now. Up for the layup. Yeah, there it is. Now everybody who's played has scored. And Paul really has just been frustrated lately. He's really tried to force his game a little bit rather than let it come to him. And that is just the type of competitor he is. He tries to take everything he can to the basket. Sometimes you've got to realize you've got to stop, take that outside opportunity. Hawkeyes need another point to set a one-team tournament record in this nine-year event, the Tampa Tribune Holiday Invitational. The scoring, and there he got it. North Texas State had the old record back in 82. I'll tell you, I'm really surprised at the number of points that Iowa put up. And they did it with ease. They were really patient on offense. They didn't get that many steals off the press, easy opportunities. They just shot it well, taking a good percentage shot. Beauty! Like that one. Met the chime. Bill Chime getting his most extended playing time, and I think having a good time. They're trying to steal another one here. Now you just play it out. Last 35 seconds of the game. Smith going to look for another assist, or is he going to take the shot? Now he's going to brick this one. Hawkeye's highest point total of the season. Here's the last. Now there's no reason for Paul to really take that shot. That's when you bring it out, work it around, and get a good open shot. Maybe even get it back inside again. Final minutes of a big, or final seconds, I should say, of a big Hawkeye victory coming up. Here's Chime again. Right, right, right. And this game is now history. They're going to count it, and I'll guarantee it was after the buzzer. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that that didn't decide anything, because that was not a very good call, but it doesn't much matter. 
as Iowa puts Butler away. 114 to 90, highest point performance of the year for the Hawkeyes. And there's a young man yeah. who's got to be awfully glad to be back, and did he respond tonight? Like we said, he's the Morris Coast player out there. Dotson Dashes, boy, I'll tell you, he's a quick little one and adds a lot to this Iowa team. The Hawkeyes had plenty of dots and dashes, and Kevin Smith provided a number of them himself. Jay Webb walks off. Everybody who dressed played tonight. Everybody who dressed scored. And Tom Davis has got to be happy with the total performance, top to bottom, of his basketball team tonight. Boy Skinner got a 10-inch cut in his chin, but he came back, didn't let it affect him. And all in all, the Hawkeyes, an impressive show as they roll to victory number seven, a 114 to 90 decision over the Butler Bulldogs. Bartles and Russ Millard, a couple of red shirt candidates walking off with Gary Close. And they dressed, but of course did not play, but everybody who did play scored. So the Iowa Hawkeyes, an impressive victory tonight, 114 to 90. There's more from Tampa, so don't go away. We'll be right back.